Hello, I'm back with a SvelteKit tutorial. Today we're going to look into UI, uh, AI to do something like this. What songs of U2 do we have? Send me a mail about it. Tool invocation. It's actually querying our database. It's sending, it's getting us the results back and it sends me an email with all the details. This is actually super easy to do thanks to a lot of smart um, packages we use. And again, it's, it's still me. It's SvelteKit plus SQLite, it's everything contained in the backend, so you can transfer this knowledge to anything you have. So let's get started. So to get started, we need to create new UI, of course, for the chat interface. And for that, we luckily don't have to do a lot because the guys at Versal are super great and smart and they came up with this AI SDK package. And um, this is so great. So on the one hand, it handles calling the LLMs in the background. And on the other hand, it also actually handles the front end. So it has like a Svelte adapter for it or a Svelte um, library. And uh, this one is super easy to implement. So let's like see to get something like this. Hello, how can you help me? It's actually not a lot of code and you can see it's, it's actually streaming the response so it's not really waiting for the whole response to come it's actually like typing it up and um, to see how this works so this is a new uh, page component I have here and um, so first what we do is we import chat from AI SDK as well so that's what you need to install and then we can just create a new chat and then we hook up an API to it. I'll show you that later. Then I just have a div, some header, some box and in there just like if we don't have any messages yet I put a message so chat.messages.length that's automatically handled and then we can just loop over the messages. Uh, I do like a check and add a class like if it's the user or the AI to distinguish between blue and white as if you have maybe seen and um, then just put it out. Like this part is a little bit weird, like message parts of part type text, but for now it's just basically putting out the text in here and we will get later into some details in there. Okay, just some, some handling to, to basically um, submit it. So we have a form around our input here and just a submit button. And like if I press enter on the text area, I'll also just um, handle submit there. Okay, so this is just UI part, just a few lines of codes. So let's go to the API part here. And in here, I'm using Claude. You can also use, you can just switch this around with uh, OpenAI or something else that supports tools. We're coming to that later. And um, yeah, so you also need to install, like for Claude, the Anthropic package. You can also like use OpenAI. We're going to implement Create Anthropic. Also, we have to use stream text. We get our cloud API key from our .env file and then we're going to create an anthropic yeah, instance with our key and then we just have this post method here. This just gets called from the form. We get the messages uh, as a JSON. What I do here is I also get from my locals because I'm logged in, I get the username and then we just call stream text and this just the CII method here, we're going to pass a model and that's how you can just switch it out to a different one. I'm using Haiku, it's a smaller one, um, uh, just to, to toy around with it, it's not a real case. And I just give a system prompt here, so you're an AI assistant that helps employees with our uh, music library and business, etc. You're friendly and helpful. And also I give some, some context, you are talking to the user uh, username and his email address is this. This will be relevant later. And just we're going to call the messages and we're going to return to data stream response. Again, that's already it. Note like I have put this in slash API chat and that's why on the front end component here, we just hook it up to that. And that's already it to get it running. So you can see like, hello, and it's going to respond to me. Um, thing is, it's not really helping us yet. It's just like an LLM. What we want to do is we want to empower it with data. 
and I teased it a little bit in the beginning. The cool part that made me interested about this and um, make this video is um, there's a hype uh, currently about MCP. It's it's model. Um, sorry, it's uh, where am I? Uh, it's it's a model context protocol, and um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, quite complex what it actually does, but it's like basically, yeah, as the name says, it gets context to your API and the power is, it, it powers the AI to call actions, basically. So um, they have support for it also like in the Claude UI and then and, and, uh, I just heard ChatGPT is adding it too. So you can like hook it up to a server that is able to, to like send context to the ChatGPT or Claude window. Um, but what we want here is a little bit different. We want to run like the LLM from our Svelte kit back at here. And that's also where our data lives. So we don't need any server or anything between. If you know me, that's the way I like to do it. Like keep things simple, rather build monoliths. You don't need microservices if you are not Netflix or Google. And um, so what we can do here is we can keep everything at this um, thing. And um, it's amazing how super easy to implement this. So long story short, um, first use case for this is um, I want to basically give it the list to our tracks so it can say like search, I can ask for example, which tracks of you two do you have? And um, so um, I want to give access to the LM to this. Um, so what I do is here I go to our um, API endpoint and you can see it here, it's commented out. We have this this uh, attribute here called tools and that's basically all this, this MCP stuff is just tools you give the LMA access to. I have this function called get tools, so let's go here. This is currently empty, but um, yeah, that's um, we can just simply add one. And notice we also need, need like here tool from AI package again and Z from Zot. Zot is a TypeScript library that makes it um, nice to define types and check types, but also can be able to document your types. That's why they used it. So first tool is to give access to the to, um, track. And luckily like I heard already like a function here called search tracks where we can just like that powers the main page, just goes to our database. So we can just give it access to it, right? So what we're going to do is we create a new tool. And just in here, const track data is tool. And the cool is you get TypeScript support. You have to put in a description. In my case, get a list of tracks from the music library. Um, parameters. So this one is like we can pass a search term like from the main page where you have a search bar. And yeah, we can just call it search term. It's, it's a string and we describe it with the search term to filter tracks, basically. And then the most important part is execute. So we pass the search term, we just call our database function, we get back an array of tracks. And we, in, in my case here, I want to, to like make it look nice to the user. So I'm going to make an UL out of it and um, with list items for each track join them and then I return the HTML. Okay, so fairly simple. It's not nothing magic right here. That, that, that's, that's basically the hardest part, the function. That's just again like calling my database, my SQLite database. And um, yeah, so now the magic basically, we have to scan tools, we return an object of all the tools we have. So this one is um, search like I, I rename it, I'm not actually sure if it uses this name, I guess it does. So I thought, yeah, okay, it's better to, to call it search track DB. And I just call, put in this tool in here. Okay. So again, if we go to our chat API tools, we get this object of tools just with this one yet. And then let's test it out already, right? So um, chat, I reload this one. And you can see, okay, let's search the track database for Foo Fighter songs. And that's where I messed up. Um, what I forgot to do is actually add back 
in it in here. So first, like this part, I commented out because of it was more simple that way. Um, now we commented back in. So we have these parts and these parts now make sense that we don't have just normal text response. We also have like tool invocations. So we, we do an if, if it's just a normal text or else if it's a tool invocation, um, then we put the details and we just um, put some, some JSON output. That's typically what you don't want to show the users, but for our debug purposes, this makes sense. And then we do another if, if the state is results. So if it's done, we can put in the result. And this is like literally the HTML I just told it to return. So now let's run this again. Um, oh, I've, I messed up. What songs of Foo Five do we have? And here we first see, okay, let me check tool invocation. Then we can see like we pass the search term Foo Fighters. It's smart enough to extract like the, the band name. And then, um, it just returns our HTML. And as I said, the second if like, uh, oops, not that one, um, that one here, it just renders this return thing and we get our list here. Great. Awesome. Okay. This is fairly easy, right? It's like not any effort at all to make this like AI capable. Um, what you can like think about is like here, I just do a super um, naive um, search here. So it's just like doing a like, a lower like. So it's not really, um, it doesn't work if I misspell it, for example. Like what songs of four fighters do we have? Then it's not. Oh, I think the LLM actually autocorrects me. Does it? Yeah, it's it's actually like, okay, the LLM is smart enough. Okay, but like, I guess for super niche band cases, you still want to improve your, your database search. Um, okay, great. So then that's like super easy and nice, et cetera. Um, so let's add a level to it and make it even more fun. So let's jump back into our code and um, let's add another action. And that's in here, uh, get tools. And then we're going to allow it to send emails. So um, we add just another action here, const send email. Description, send an email to a user. Parameters to recipient's email address, subject, and body. And just, I marked this here, so it, it will just console log the email and return again, like some HTML that we can show in the interface. Again, we have to add it to this object, send email. Great, so here we have now two tools. And the cool thing is like, okay, well, what do we want to send about? So what we want to do is like get track information and then send an email about it to us. So it's actually using two tools now. Um, and again, luckily this is fairly easy. The thing you want to do here is, and that's what I comment in here, is like max steps. That's an attribute where you can limit how much times basically it can call a tool, etc. You don't want to do it too high. It will like maybe go crazy. It's still like LLM said, not 100% do everything correct. Um, but um, yeah, so we'll say basically five times, I guess lower would make sense for a small case, but again, just something to tr toy around with. And then again, remember that I gave it some context. Like here, this is now like a static email address, but like normally I don't have it like set up in my app. Um, from, my, from my environment basically, but if I would, I would use it of course from there, but just for testing, this works at hhandfeller.dev. Save this and let's see what happens. What songs by you two do we have? Please send me the list via email. And so first it should of course look up the songs. So it's again calling our search track DB thing with the search term you two comes up with a list, then great, I've compiled a list of all the songs. I'll go ahead 
and send this list to your email now. It takes actually some time. And then it says tool invocation, result, tool name, send email to my email address. It works, subject, you two songs in music library. Here's a list and just adds my UL. Cool, this is pretty great. Also my result is for my HTML, so of course like you would hide this, but then you can display something like email to with subject is sent successfully. Also what I, what I want to say is like the HTML you can put here, you can like really put buttons or inputs or something in there and put it back into the context of course to like if it has questions or something. That's what I didn't play around with yet, but keep that in the back of your mind that you can really go and do complex things with that. Okay, so really impressive, I think. We can also do like, um, yeah, chaining different tools. He's also like really did call our action, use this console log thing. And okay, great. Last one I want to show is like actually like writing actions. So I, I will add here rename album rename an album in the music library. Make sure to search tracks first to get the album ID. So now that in here I put like album and ID into it because otherwise it doesn't know the album ID. So I tested this around a little bit and unfortunately it's a bit unnaive, let's call it that way. Um, like if it didn't, like first it didn't even call this one so I needed to add this make sure thing. And then I, if I didn't have the ID in here actually, then it would actually um, not, um, it will just make up any album ID. And this is of course like pretty horrible. Um, so I maybe, I'm not sure, like you could like prompt better, but that's the thing with LLMs. Um, yeah, they're sometimes just eager to do something and don't think about whether they should, or if they don't have enough information. So again, but like just call, update album is just again calling update that's what we use also somewhere else in this app and then we just again pass it here so now we have three tools again it should be chained so um, and then we can say okay rename achtung uh, u2s achtung baby to achtung svalt and then again, it's first, it's actually looking up the, 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 the list and it sees, okay, Achtung Baby has like ID 232. And then it's going to call the um, rename album 232 to Achtung Swalt. And actually when we like go to this thing and search for Achtung, we can see it actually changed it. Great. So. Uh, please keep in mind that in here you can even go more in depth like you can even like decide what to do by the tool that's actually called and do different things now I just like naively if there are like um, tool invocation information put them and that there's a result put it in there but like sometimes you may not want to return HTML sometimes you want to so you can like switch around there this is also like a pretty new the parts thing I just saw actually I didn't know before it's just was released a few days ago and here there's even like more you can do like reasoning information files i think like image generation you can return files um sources with urls if you look up online things so yeah this is like really ongoing and stuff moving around so it's it's a really interesting concept and yeah i'm i'm a big fan of it um, I really like it. It's super easy. I, ne I never would have imagined this would be so easy. But yeah, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, if you want to see more of me, I'm actually like now more active at uh, United Codes. When it's more Apex related here, you can see my face lots of times. Um, so check out that channel if you would like. Um, and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye bye.